Hey guys, it's Flower Friday, and today we're gonna to be brightening up the blueberry pots that I planted uh, back at the beginning of March, late February. And if you remember, I double potted those because they were bare root, and so I had these large pots. So I planted the bare root blueberries in a smaller pot, sunk it into the larger pots, and in the ground here, we have very uh, neutral to alkaline soil, and blueberries like it acidic. So. We can't really grow blueberries in the ground here. That's why they're in pots. So I used some uh, acid potting mix to plant those in. And then around that pot, I used some regular potting mix. And so throughout the seasons, we can replace those with colorful flowers for whatever season we're in until the blueberry outgrows the smaller pot that it's in. And we'll just need to kind of take over this whole pot. So. At the time of planting these, I also put in some pansies because those are nice winter, spring color. Uh, and we had a lot of rain and they did well in the beginning. They should be doing well though now because we're still having cool weather. The problem was once the rain stopped, the watering stopped. Because while I ran a drip tube through the bottom of each one of these, and it is in each one of these containers, I forgot to hook up the drip tube to the supply line. So they were sitting here without water. So I fixed that a few weeks ago, but they haven't really recovered. So I'm just going to take them out and put in some new flowers that will take us through the summer and into the fall. Now these blueberries, I actually hadn't realized how much they had grown. I thought they were kind of just sitting here until I looked at um, preparing for this video. I looked at the video where I planted these and they've actually put on a lot of growth and they're looking very healthy. So I'm not worried about uh, treating the soil to get the pH down, make it more acidic. I think they're just fine right now. If your blueberries are looking, they should look either dark green or the new growth might be a pinkish orange color. Uh, they will turn green. But if they are yellowing with green veins or if they have black or brown around the edges, that could be a pH issue. And so you want to test the soil or add some soil acidifier to wherever you have them planted. So today we'll be planting all five of these pots up with new flowers around the blueberries. And to be honest, I'm not sure if these pots, if this is their final place, this entire area will be transformed starting this coming fall, winter. Uh, this is going to be the traditional formal English garden. And I've mentioned that before, but I don't think I've taken you through how it would actually look. So right here, we're at our front door. And if I flip the camera around, we come out here on this beautiful 1970s tile. We'll probably change that into pavers eventually, but there's a little sitting area here. There's a raised bed right here. If you come out here to the right down this path is the vegetable Mediterranean garden. You can see the wall we just finished. Of course, across the driveway is the English cottage garden. And then all of this weedy dirt area will be the formal English garden. Now, when that starts to happen, this raised bed will be removed and taken down to the level of the tile. And actually the level of this tile will go all the way out, just about to where you see the pots. Um, so from the corner of this house, in a straight line to about right there, all of this is going to be at the level I'm standing at now, which is about two feet lower than it is now. And this is gonna be a courtyard. Now, in front of the, the pots where it kind of sloughs off, there'll be a retaining wall to hold that up, and then probably a small brick planter in front of that along the whole way, and then a courtyard area here. And then starting at this wall, there's going to be three areas, 10 feet wide each and 50 feet long. So you can see where this wall ends way down there. That's gonna be the dimension. So 30 by 50 will be the dimensions of this first terrace of the English garden. And so that wall right there will come all the way down this way. And from 10 feet over between the wall and here will be a 10 foot by 50 foot uh, formal English border, and then there'll be a 10 foot wide, 50 feet long lawn area, and then there'll be a 10 foot wide, 50 foot long formal English border to mirror the one on this side. 
So I'm not exactly sure what this will be, if these pots will stay there, maybe we'll have gravel underneath. I'm not sure yet, but we don't have to worry about that right now. We just need to worry about planting these up for summer. Now on the last couple of garden tours, I've had several people ask about these pots. I just got these at Sam's Club. They were relatively inexpensive for the size. These are not plastic, they're some kind of plaster, and they seem to be well made for uh, the price. So here is what I'm replacing them with. We've got some sweet alyssum in different colors. Uh, this is a great little annual. However, it does seed itself very easily, so it will come back like a perennial. It's full sun to part shade, and they're just kind of neatly mounding plants. They will trail a little bit as well, hanging over the side of a container. And then here we've got some purple calabrachoa. This is cabaret lavender. And I'm really liking the calabrachoa that we put in these containers here in front of the garage. Uh, they seem to always have flowers on them. They're self-cleaning. You don't need to deadhead. As soon as the flower dies, it falls right off. Now those are perennials uh, in areas where you get little to zero frost. And they're gonna get about six to 10 inches high and about 12 inches wide. So they will uh, spill over the edge of the containers. And here we have Micardonia, which uh, and it's little sunshine is the variety. And this is a great little um, plant. It doesn't grow very big. It only gets four to six inches high. Uh, it will trail though. It can reach about 14 inches wide. It's a drought tolerant plant. So it doesn't, so it's really great for containers. Um, both of the, all three of these are full sun lovers and will bloom from uh, now until through the fall and maybe even longer. I know Alyssa, I had blooming here all winter in the vegetable garden. So we'll see kind of what these do. I'll probably replace them anyway in the fall and possibly plant them into the landscape because technically we should fall into the little to no frost zone. So let's go ahead and clean the pansies out of these pots and then we will get to planting and then I'll come back and show you how to fertilize um, potted plant or how I do it at least uh, once we're done with planting. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the potting soil in here. Not in the inner pot where the acid potting mix is, just around the edge. I'm gonna throw some fertilizer in here. And you know, you don't have to replace potting soil at the end of each season. In fact, it never needs to be 100% replaced. I just, uh, after a, maybe a year of use, I'll take out about 20% add it to the compost and then top it up with 20% new and just kind of mix it in. And then add some fertilizer. And it's as good as new, pretty much. Now, as far as placement of the flowers goes, I'm gonna be putting three of the alyssum in each pot, two calabrachoas, two of the macardonias, just like that. Now again, these are all gonna be very low growing, which I want. I don't wanna cover up this foliage of the blueberry. I want the blueberry to be able to grow up and out of that. So I will place these in all the pots and we'll kind of get a long shot view and see how it looks.
Okay, so I misspoke earlier. We're only having one of the Calabrachoa per pot because it's purple, as are the Sweet Alyssum. So it was more of a balance. We've got two yellows, some white, pink, and purple. All right, time to plant. Pretty happy with these. You know, as I was planting, I got to thinking, I really do like having something here along the driveway for seasonal interest. So, you know, that can be switched out with the seasons. I mean, we could do a fall, a Christmas, a spring, a summer, and you, know, you could have tulips in these pots, something that makes a statement as you come down the drive. I mean, it'll look better when there's not that behind it. But anyway, just block that out for now. The thing is though, when these are planted with blueberries and I take the pot out of here, when these are ready to be potted up and now it's just them in this pot with acidic soil, not only will less things grow, of course you can find other acidic flowers to grow in here, but you're not gonna wanna take away from what the, the blueberry plant needs to thrive in a pot with other plants that will take up nutrients. So maybe next year or whenever these need to be potted up, these blueberries, I will be changing them out and putting them in another pot and keeping these pots for seasonal interest. What do you guys think? Let me know. Now the pots that we put here on either side of the garage door and potted up a few months ago, this one on the right is doing much better in terms of flowering. It gets probably an hour, probably an hour more sun than the one on the left. And you can see it's got a lot less flowering going on here. So I'm gonna give it some fertilizer, both of them, and see if that helps. And for all my containers, I use Neptune's Harvest Rose and Flowering Formula. I don't measure it, I just put that in there. Add water. All of the Neptune's Harvest products are great foliar feeds, as well as, you know, root feed, but, you know, make sure just kind of shower the, the leaves with it for a little bit and then water it in at the root. And containers really should be fed every week or two. Uh, there's limited capacity for the roots to be able to go out and find the nutrients they need and it all flushes out pretty quickly in containers more than it would in the soil. Also gonna give all the pots we just planted a good watering. I'm not going to fertilize for another few weeks yet for these because they already have the fertilizer that I used at planting time and that serves as kind of a slow release and quick release. So even though I have drip in here, I want to make sure it gets a good soaking because I don't know if the drip, I can't remember if this turns on tomorrow or the next day. Well, that was a fun project. What do you think? I'm happy with it. I think I'm going to enjoy watching them grow and fill in over the next month or so. Continue to stay subscribed for our garden tours where I'll give you an update on these and everything else. And if you're into watching videos about how I'm building everything and putting all of this place together, like that big, huge, elaborate building back there, then definitely make sure to go over to Next Level Homestead and take a look there. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up, or even if you were just entertained a little bit, thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, share it with a friend, and I'll see you guys next time.